this place clean. La, 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 Merciful heavens. There's a boy building a castle. A boy building a sandcastle in a new film called The Sandcastle. We have with us the producer-director of The Sandcastle, a man whose last previous film was the Academy Award-winning Albert Schweitzer. Here is Mr. Jerome Hill. As a matter of fact, it's, it's more than 10 years ago. I just finished a film on Grandma Moses, and I was planning a series of pictures on great living people. Jerome Hill was a very wealthy, privileged man who decided to devote his life to the arts. He was a multidisciplined artist and excelled in film. He was a documentary filmmaker, but he later became an experimental filmmaker. This is a man who gave a lot of his own personal wealth to people he knew who he thought were great artists. The Jerome Foundation began in 1964 in a very small way. Uh, Jerome Hill was the grandson of James J. Hill, was born in 1905 in St. Paul, and died in November of 1972 in New York City. Jerome Hill's generosity in setting up the Jerome Foundation was to create a structure for his own grant making. He created the foundation with a broad charitable purpose because he wanted directors after his death to be able to focus the foundation on important needs of their time. The Camargo Foundation in Cassis, France, was set up to benefit scholars and artists who wanted to come to France, experience the culture, and would bring that knowledge back to the United States. Jerome, within his own philanthropy, gave a great deal to emerging artists. <laughs> The Jerome Foundation seeks to contribute to a dynamic and vibrant culture by seeding the creation of new works in Minnesota and New York City. Jerome is unique in that we only fund the arts. We support the disciplines of dance, theater, music, literature, visual arts, and film video and digital production. We receive anywhere from 1,500 to 1,800 applications each year. We're currently estimating that in our individual granting programs, we support one out of seven applications. Subject matter is not of great concern to us. It's mostly the conviction and the passion that the artist has for the story she or he wants to tell. The story is about a Hmong man terminally ill and decides to go on a journey to visit his father's grave back in Laos. And so in essence, it's his own personal journey going back to pay tribute and respect to his father, whom he never really got to be with. The Jerome is great for nurturing the development of uh, artists and, you know, the project wherever it may lead to. Because when we first originally applied for the Jerome grant, we weren't going to go overseas. We were going to do it here in Minnesota. But when we won the Jerome, we developed the film more and decided that it will be more effective for the Hmong community and us as artists if we took the, the story further. We have an incredibly strong community of dramatic filmmakers here in Minnesota, one of whom is a young filmmaker by the name of Brennan Vance, yeah. who did a short film called Alma that actually blew me away and blew away the panel who reviewed the film uh, because he applied for uh, Jerome Grant to do a feature-length version of the same story. So this has been just a great two months, you know? I've been th thrown out of my practice. I have significant dementia. Yeah. I have significant, uh, I crashed my car. Uh, I get arrested by the police. 
I'm really trying to make really films good. that relate to more of an art audience. The fact that there are foundations like Jerome that are willing to support, encourage projects that are taking risks is a game changer and it just means the world to filmmakers who otherwise wouldn't make projects simply because they're not commercially viable. Over the 50 year history of the foundation, we've provided close to $10 million to filmmakers in Minnesota and New York City. That's a substantial amount of money and it's made a big difference in uh, these artists being able to realize their work. I guarantee you that uh, whoever we decide to support, that there's something very unique and original and, and compelling about what they do. Thank you, Bruce Lee, for devastating my childhood like a cinder block for all the- The Foundation's focus in literature has been primarily about supporting emerging writers. And independent presses that are respected throughout the country, and I would even say the world. Give me a place to stand and a lever long enough, and I will move the world. You ever hear that? We've been funding Jerome Fellows through the Playwright Center for 39 years. The first grant was $1,800, and it supported six emerging playwrights. August Wilson was one of the early Jerome-supported playwrights. There was a snowstorm in Jackson when you and I met at a club called St. Sebastian's, but the sun said something different. And I remember thinking that I didn't have a shot at Mississippi Television told us which roads they were closing. There goes a the rap show. The Jerome Foundation has provided support to a broad range of sound makers. One of Jerome Foundation's longest relationships in music has been with the American Composers Forum. Commissioning composers is a sweet spot for Jerome. Emerging choreographers create new work on an irregular basis. So Jerome Foundation's support enables rehearsal, it enables choreographers to hire collaborators. We've been amazed by the range of work that's resulted. Ambitious pieces, some that succeed and some that fail. I do want to say that Jerome Foundation has a great appetite for failure, particularly if the failures are brilliant, ambitious, and bold. The Jerome support in the visual arts is broad. We'll range anywhere from a printmaking residency at High Point Center for Printmaking. It can be an installation at the soap factory to public work in an environment like Franconia Sculpture Park in Schaefer, Minnesota. The foundation has been funding Franconia Sculpture Park for nearly 20 years so that it can allow artists in residencies to create large-scale public sculpture, often larger than anything that they've done before. There's over 100 sculptures installed here. It's an emerging artist fellowship, so some of them are fairly um, early in their careers, and they pull off a new and ambitious project, and this opens up new doors for future opportunities. Franconia wouldn't exist on the scale that it exists today without the Jerome Foundation. We're celebrating the 50 year anniversary now I think in memory of Jerome's history and his commitment to artists. And society is always shifting and changing, and I think that is where our artists come from. And I think that's why their ideas tend to be different from generation to generation. I think we also honor his legacy by asking ourselves, what does the arts community need in order to make sure that that legacy is pertinent and fresh?